turns out the second defendant didn't want an HDMI connection, but instead uh, wanted to be able to hook up their iPad via uh, AirPlay. So uh, we set up an Apple TV for them. Well, they brought their own Apple TV. We also have them too, but we just used theirs because they had it and they're already like configured for their own iP uh, Apple TV. Okay, so today what we've got going is um, we are setting up a courtroom at the Daly Center um, for a probably like a week and a half long trial. And so what I wanted to go over today was what we typically bring uh, when we're setting up a trial. We're supporting, I think, all three parties involved with AV support. Um, so let's go over kind of what we tend uh, to put together. So I'm going to jump into my penultimate app here and just get another um, sketch going. And so the way that a typical uh, daily center courtroom is set up is uh, the judge is going to be kind of up here, uh, witness will be here, witness, judge, and then the clerk will kind of sit there. Jury box will sit here. I mean, sometimes it's reversed, but this is essentially um, the way that the courtrooms look. Plaintiff's table is here, defense table is here. Right. So um, our, our goal is to leave this area, the well of the courtroom, as open as possible. And so that's where the attorneys want to stand. They usually want to stand like right here and talk to the jury during openings. And they want to stand, oops, I did this wrong. If the jury box is on this side, um, the witness is on this side. And so during the directs, uh, they want to stand here so they can talk to the witness and have the jury uh, hear the answers. And if they're crossing the witness, they might stand kind of like in this area um, over here. And so we want to leave this area as unencumbered as possible. There's usually a little bit of a ledge here, and then there's usually a little bit of a ledge here. So the way we set up our typical courtroom is we will bring in an AV cart and uh, we'll set the projector up on the AV cart. We'll bring a second cart and we'll put the uh, Elmo or the document camera right there. Then uh, the Elmo, let's see, let's get like a different color here. Uh, the document, uh, the projector rather, will then shoot the image on the wall uh, back here. And so it's gonna go above and behind uh, kind of the plaintiff's table. And the idea is that this gives the judge a good view, the witness a good view, the jury a good view, and the attorney a good view all at the same time without anyone having to, um, to turn around. And so in addition to that, uh, we have a couple of other monitors. Now, sometimes we could set up a monitor for the judge and the witness. Usually we try not to do that uh, that way because number one, the judge has the best seat in the house. The witness has the second best seat in the house. If they can't see, the jurors can't see anyway. And so if the witness is struggling, that's a good indication for your uh, hot seat person that they need to zoom in a little bit um, and make the image bigger for everyone to read. The other thing being a lot of times, you know, you get things like, you know, if you look at the document right here, if you look at the photo on this point, right, the witness might say that and they'll be pointing to their witness screen, but no one else can kind of see where that is. So if there's only one screen to look at, I'm a big fan of like the one screen uh, approach, uh, then everyone is literally on the same page whenever someone's like pointing or directing someone's attention to things. So in addition to on this AV cart, this is where we always put the DVD player and we also put the speakers right there too. And so that'll all go on there. Um, what we also have in here on this cart, we have our switch, which uh, it's a, a switcher presentation scaler, um, which allows us to take all the different inputs, whether it's a DVD player, whether it's a document camera, uh, an iPad, laptop, these can all be simultaneously hooked up to the system, and then you're switching them just like channels on a TV. Um, and then we also have a, uh, distribution amplifier and that takes a signal and pumps it out to the projector but also we have a um, monitor at each council table um, so that they can see what the jurors are going to be seeing and that's important for them to have uh, because one the screens behind them and like up above them uh, but it's also important for them to have because uh, they need to look at the exhibits a little bit more closely specifically if they need to like examine like a bait stamp number uh, on an exhibit that the other side's putting up they'll want to be able to look at it a little bit more closely Mostly. Um, to put that all together, so what we do is um, we'll put usually either a VGA or HDMI input here, 
uh, so that the plaintiff's counsel, whoever is a hot seat person for the plaintiff, can, let's put that in as, let's say that's input one, right? Uh, can plug in, whether it's HDMI or VGA, and then we'll run cables along kind of the perimeter of the courtroom, again, keeping this well as open as possible. And then for number two, we'll set up theirs and we'll set it up so they can run either HDMI or VGA. Um, and then we'll run again along the floors and along the perimeter of the room to get to the uh, switcher scaler. Then if there's a third defendant, which there is in this case, um, they'll get a monitor too. And then we'll run the cables again like this. Right, so we have those three inputs, and the DVD player is an input, so that goes in kind of like this too. All right, so those all go into the uh, the switcher scaler. All right, the input signal, depending on whether you're looking at plaintiff one, defendant one, defendant two, or the um, document camera, and I'm just drawing it this way because the lines are getting all a little hectic, but usually we, we run this cable right along the jury box so no one can see it, and again, this area stays nice and clean. Uh, and we use Velcro to um, cover up all the areas where people might be walking because the witness is going to have to come in through this way to get to the witness stand. So this area is a high traffic area. A lot of times the jurors will also come into the room this way and the jury room is usually over here in that area. And so this is like the most high traffic area and we make sure that the cables are down and off very secure in that spot. So from there, depending on, you know, no matter what signal you have, you can pick your document camera, you know, this could be uh, an iPad, this could be a laptop, this could be a Mac. Um, we can have all those set up and we'll have remotes set at each table. So that way everyone can control it uh, from no matter where they're sitting in the courtroom. Um, the signal from the switch then gets sp split to the distribution amplifier. And now I'll use a different color to uh, kind of show what's going on with that. So from the distribution amplifier, it's sending a signal to the projector, right? That's a messy triangle. So it sends a signal to the projector so the jurors can see it, but it also is sending a signal to the monitor here, the monitor here, and the monitor here. So there's a lot of cables that are going on. The cables that run to the plaintiff's table are usually about 50 feet. The ones that run to defendant one and two are 75 feet. That's way more than we need, uh, but you definitely need more than like 30 feet, for example, in order to make this work. Um, and so you need longer runs, uh, and especially when you're dealing with HDMI, longer runs of more than 30 feet get a little bit difficult. So that's why we use HD base T. Um, so that's pretty much the basic setup. Um, then we also run power, make sure there's power strips. Uh, and we'll put power strips. And we'll put one right here, because there's a plug right there. And then we'll put another power strip right here, and we'll run an extension cord to connect that. And then the document camera connects to that power strip here. We we'll usually put a power strip like underneath the table here, another power strip underneath the table here, and then we'll daisy chain it to a power strip over here. There is no socket on the floor here. There are sockets on the floor usually at the daily center here and here and here. There is like a junction box or like an ethernet box usually in every courtroom right here. I have no idea what it does. I've never been able to plug anything into it successfully. So don't be fooled into using that. There is a power socket in here, inside the jury box. And I've seen some people run snake cables in through the jury box underneath the jurors, kind of like where their feet would go to reach that. I, I don't think that's a good idea. I usually don't like that because you do not want tripping hazards uh, for your jurors. There's also a socket behind the pews, kind of like over in this area and in this area here too. Um, but usually I don't need to use those unless I have a third defendant that has a table here. So that's pretty much our general layout. That's like the schematic. Um, unfortunately, I don't think I can really bring you into the courtroom with me to show the setup and what it looks like. Um, 
every once in a while it's really quiet at the courthouse there and I sneak a photo here and there of our equipment not of any of the jurors judges parties nothing like that um, but just the equipment uh, for the sake of my training purposes so I can train people that do these setups with me and for me um, but this is generally the way that the room is set up um, I think I didn't mention here that this screen is usually a widescreen uh, and we have a 1080p projector so we're getting full HD um, to a 16 by 9 ratio screen that's about like 140 inches so a little bit under 12 feet diagonal and so that gives you a really nice image the distance between this projector and say this juror that's sitting outside the juror box which is like alternate number one is about 23 feet to 25 feet the daily center it's a little bit of a fun house depending on which stack like of courtroom you're in like whether it's the 01 or the you know or the you know or the 12 stack uh, going up the courtrooms are all very similar but slightly different sizes. Some are wider, some are longer. And so this is kind of the general way that we usually set it up uh, for a three uh, person setup. And um, yeah, now we got to, um, after lunch, Trey's gonna come in. We're gonna pick all the equipment that we need off of the, the racks back there. And then um, we're gonna go over to the courthouse. Dave, uh, my uh, law student, um, he's gonna help us uh, over there too and so we're gonna set this courtroom up right now they're doing jury selection and that's usually when we like to come in is at the end of the day after jury selection um, to set it up and then openings will be tomorrow morning just finished up at the courtroom uh, set up the courtroom for three parties a little bit of a twist from what we had um, originally anticipated today turns out the second defendant didn't want an HDMI connection but instead uh, wanted to be able to hook up their iPad via uh, AirPlay, so uh, we set up an Apple TV for them. Well, they brought their own Apple TV. We also have them too, but we just used theirs because they had it and they're already like configured for their own iP uh, Apple TV. So we set that up for them and they're all set up that way. So plaintiff will be using uh, an iPad via HDMI. Uh, defendant, I think they're using VGA. That's what we have set up for them. Uh, they really weren't that communicative. And then defendant two is gonna be using an iPad uh, wirelessly connected to the projector via AirPlay. And then what we typically do is we check in with the clients every day, every morning, just to make sure nothing went wrong the night before. And uh, in case there's something unusual that's gonna happen, maybe they have an expert witness coming in uh, that has uh, a laptop uh, that's gonna be different or needs to be set up in a different place. Uh, that way when we check in in the morning, we can know that. Um, and also we can provide any additional support that we need to um, when we see them in the mornings. So we didn't get in there until a little bit later. Jury selection went late. In fact, it's not even done. Um, they still have to pick some more jurors tomorrow, but we're all set up and we'll be ready to go. So as soon as the juries are picked, they don't have to wait for us to set up. So the room's ready and um, should be a good trial.